Welcome back to the podcast. I am Mr. Made Over. I am Mrs. Made Over. Uh, first of all, I want to say <laughs> thank you to all the love. Yes. We have been receiving from uh, people who have been reaching out to us about our podcast that yes. we have been doing it. Um, and you, I think for I think for me and you, I know for me. Okay. Cause I, Cause I can only speak for me. I, was gonna say, you I can't. Say I can't it, speak for you. It, it. But for me, I don't look for the numbers. I don't look for the accolades. I literally do this to be. I think as our, as my uh, spiritual mother was preaching today about crying out loud and, mm-hmm. and giving people a sense of hope, giving mm-hmm. people a sense of. That this life that you're in You can do it I, I don't do this for the likes I don't right. do this for the views I don't do this for You know The sponsorships Or anything like that But It, it I just want y'all to know That we appreciate Yes Everything that you're giving And from from me it's, it's, it's To God be the glory First off Because without him We could never be able to Do none of this I don't think y'all understand Like this <laughs> This came I, This whole vision I came It started years ago But How it came yeah, yeah. Was In such A, a, right. a rush in the How it re, Like how it Remanif Is that I guess that's where It remanifested I, I would say unfolded Or unfolded You know But Yeah But that's just me You know How you feel about it I mean I think I look at the view Well first off Yeah Like at first, the idea behind having or being on this with you, <laughs> I was like, man, I ain't about to be, man, I'm, man, I gotta lose weight. I gotta, like, I had every excuse to not be on here with you. But then after that first show, it just became something that I was excited about. And I became excited because it was, I know that. I've had experiences that I can help people yeah. with. Um, and before I wasn't confident in that. But that's something that you kind of instill like, babe, you got a lot. And that's why, you know, you always like being fought. Have you ever thought about that? You got a voice. No, I didn't ever think about it like, like that. Even sound like no. That. <laughs> it don't sound like him at all. Um, he's a lot more sincere with it. Um, but just that reminder and so I am very thankful that we have this platform for me to be able to share um, and all glory to God because I mean it's everything I do is off the cuff I think from every blooper or whatever you call them that you catch me on uh, to just the in-depth conversations I don't know what I'm going to say we don't rehearse we don't we don't sometimes know topics until we sit down in our chairs and um i do look at i do i think i probably look at the the views more than him but it's not to see how meant like oh that's all we got it's like wow what we're doing is reaching so many households i think that's how i see it is we came in this wanting to make an impact we came in it wanting to bring positivity that kids can listen to adults young and old and the fact that my mama who wow. don't even do youtube is watching and sharing and like, bless her heart you know bless her heart she watching all of it and my grandma yeah. fall asleep on it but she says she wake up and she bless finished. her heart too <laughs> but know? I think for me that's what it is because a lot of the stuff that I'm sharing they don't know mm-hmm. um, so it is just you know people that are working with um, I guess like young women or, or women in general are saying like thank you because we didn't know like I'm being transparent and it's crazy that this is the platform that I'm being transparent on but um, I look at the views simply because I don't worry about the likes. It's the views that get me because I'm like, man, that means we are in that many households. Right. That means we are reaching that many people. And I even go beyond just the numbers. I look deep into the analy- 
analytics. Where are people viewing us from? Shout out to the people that are from India because we are getting a you lot really? of we are getting a lot of love from India. See, I dig deeper than than just the numbers, but yeah. we are getting See, love from the U- U.S. I think for me, uh, I, you and, know, I just do the work for the most yeah, part. Yeah, and I'm 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 the researcher of the relationship, so I think that's why I dig into it. And so, I mean, I say thank you, and of course, all glory to God because. Y'all, this ain't something that I do. I don't like talking to people like that being in my business. Yeah, right. No, no, I no, no, like no I gotta, no, I gotta stop you right there. You that's talking to people. I can't let but you just like, slide by okay. with that one. All right, well, let me. Okay. Every time you come from Target, yeah. I met this lady today. <laughs> I met somebody everywhere. No, okay, let me say this. <laughs> I don't like being, I don't like telling my business. I'm very, I'm a very private person. And so for me to be able to still share, through that, um, I'm just grateful that I have the confidence to be able to do it. Well, I think that in a lot of ways, um, nobody knows how to get over their their, their test right. until they see somebody else's testimony. Right. And I think for me, it's it's reason why I walk this thing because I've seen people do it. Like yeah. I feel like if you're human, what's the difference between me and you? If you do, if you did, I. I know I can do it, and, right. it, and there's no shot to say like, no, this person, this is that. But for the most part, you're giving me a path to go through. Right. So with this whole platform, with this everything that has come about, we are doing the same thing. We're yeah. showing you that we're regular people. Right. Yeah, we're we, nobody special. We are not. You know, special, um, y'all. and we we battle <laughs> day to day things, yeah. day in and day out that. All y'all deal with And yeah. we're just showing you Okay this is what we did To get up We're no professionals This is, this is I'm not, the, I'm, No I'm not no professional This is I think For for me Because I'm more Like social media presence Than you are um, This is like what? When y'all see I do have more presence Than you do I'm YouTube What you talking yeah, about Whatever Okay <laughs> Anyway like The social <laughs> media Tell my YouTube people Stand up Nah but <laughs> you, you know what See I just don't Whatever man Uh, But anyway So like when I say that It's like I post more about Things happening in our life That are not recorded Let's say it like that Like I do (laughs) What? See y'all Okay Let me get like I post pictures of food and I'm that person and I record our kids and I'm doing he records them but they are never posted I'll say that yeah now I understand like can I wait it's my turn fine then go ahead so oh so I have a, a presence and you know how like they say you post on social media and then like this is like this is the social media side but this is the behind the closed doors like youtube for me or us like doing a podcast this that's the behind the closed doors like it may look like we got well we take pictures any kind of way but it may look like some days i have it all together but behind this i'm gonna tell you like y'all i just you know this is just that what we talked about in the last episode. This is just my experience. What we talked about in the last episode. We talked about who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Y'all, he dug in my bag. First of all, um, I didn't dig in nobody's bag. Ain't digging nobody's bag. I just did what Oprah did: ask questions. And I, just but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So that's that's just a nutshell. But we, this is our behind closed doors. We are not perfect. We far from far it. Far from it. Far from we don't have it all together. We don't know everything. Um, but we lean to God. We lean to our spiritual parents. We lean to each other. Uh, and that's how we get through this thing. Yeah, all day. All um, day. We're surrounded oh. by great people. We are. I mean, tremendous people. And I always tell people if, if you show me your surroundings, I'll tell you your future. Yeah. And if you're not surrounding yourself with people who are going to build you up, pick you up, yeah. show you how to get over stuff, I guarantee you, you'll be stuck in that same rut. Right. So, but so, today's topic. Oh, Jesus. I already feel it, too. I know you do because I've been feeling you. Like, <laughs> And when it comes to the topic, look, 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 I, I wanted to zero back in on the topics. And if you ever want to like our topics are not um season based. Like I don't do a it's uh it's this 
month. So I'm gonna do this this type of topic. I I usually give whatever whatever is given to me. That's what I give because I feel like people are in a certain mind frame right. that they need to hear and that they need to you know help help getting over things and help dissecting things. Right. And like I said, I'm far I'm far from perfect, but I've seen and I've been through a lot. And sometimes topics are they're just they're off the cuff. That's what I keep hearing that that they're on point too. Yeah, they're That's off the I cuff. Yeah, they're off the cuff. And um, like I said, they're not rehearsed. And sometimes he'll come at me to see if I have anything. And and that's she like, okay, have you been? My thing is, I, I I'm, I'm always like, have you been talking to the Holy Ghost? Like, yeah, uh, yes. are, are are you are you listening? Are you listening? What'd you hear? Like last mm-hmm. topic, whether she knowing that we was in sync spiritually. Oh, really? Because I said, okay, what topic do you want to talk about? She said self identification. I said, if you go to my topic list. That's one of the things Basically who, has, yeah. who am I And, and Yeah That's how the topics work But today's topic Today's is a, topic it's, is it's It's one that is sensitive Very But it's one that Everybody is dealing with Right now Right now I guarantee you Walked outside Right now And You begin to just Stand there And feel the atmosphere You'll feel this You will feel this yeah. I guarantee you If you turn on the TV You're gonna feel that You're gonna feel this mm-hmm. I guarantee you No matter where you go In life right now You're gonna feel that. This right here <laughs> This topic right here You will feel You will No matter how old you are Oh This 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 right here And, and it, it's been on my heart heavy It's been on my heart heavy Because it, it's it's what I've been feeling in the atmosphere. It's what I've been seeing over months and months and months. But now it's 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 more intensified now. Mm-hmm. So somebody said, say the, just say the topic. Just I am. It. I'm getting to it. Oh, rush me. Topic? Can you just tell it to me? Just, just, he just out listen here. to the credits. Yeah, voice done got all deep. But um, serious. But I want y'all to know that with this topic, you're not alone. You're not. Um. And the topic is anxiety. Anxiety is when I tell you has hit and shook the earth to its core right about now, where people right now mm-hmm. are dealing with so much anxiety. And today we are going to number one talk about it. Yeah, talking about it helps. It does. Um, I know my wife. Who me? She deals with this and has been dealing with this for a while. If you if, if you go back to our last podcast, mm-hmm. which it'll be somewhere around here, um, how we talked about who I am, mm-hmm. and to me that was the beginning stages of her okay. anxiety and mm-hmm. being picked on <laughs> and being called Miss Piggy. Like I said, Miss Piggy to me was fine. I had no problem, Miss Piggy. <laughs> It was Kermit. Kermit couldn't. Never mind. Then let's just let's just you know move forward. But anxiety, anxiety. I know the world is dealing with it. So can you? Me? Are you able to, or will you be able to? Let me ask that because I know this is a um. It's a sensitive topic, hey, and if y'all see my eyelashes come off, boo, it's just the real thing. That's it. <laughs> But first, before we get started, I do want to say we are not therapists, mm-hmm. so we are Far not going to therapize you. We are not certified counselors or any of that. Um, we this, do know one though. We yeah, we we know the father. That's that's <laughs> that's that's it. Um, but we will mainly be speaking from, um, or I guess I'll be speaking from experience. Yeah. Um, and um. Uh, Mo can talk about just his experience in this with me um, and how it has affect how it had affected us mm-hmm. um, in the past and how it is now currently affecting us um, and the the kids. Yeah. Um, so from the family aspect, so I can talk to you from just the person going through it. Um, and he can share with you that family side. But again, I just want to say, put out the disclaimer. We are not therapists. We are not um, 
counselors or a psychologist. We don't have a degree in this. Um, Mm -hmm. And my strategies and tactics um, came from uh, therapists that are certified um, and counselors that are certified. And so that um, the, the tips and the strategies that I give you, they worked, but they, they are not my own. They don't belong. They don't belong to me. But they work. So, but you they know, work. And yeah. They may they may work for they may just work, they yeah. work for her doesn't mean yeah. it works for you. So it works for me, but it may not work for you. And I've tried several di- or I try or do several different things. So yeah. Are you ready, Devin? I guess so. Whew. Um I feel it right now. Do 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 do. This is how she sing her way out of it, but <laughs> we in there now. So yeah. Um we're I mean Let's start. Um from a time where you realize that you had it. Because I know it's the times where from a person outside looking in, husband mm-hmm. outside looking in, trying to figure out what was going on. What was going on. Yeah. And I never understood it. I never understood the mind frame of it. Right. So I'm gonna let you dive into that world. Um I mean, I I remember something was wrong from um, back when I was younger. Even it it started something so simple and some people had this um, going on trips. So like if we were doing a field trip for school, I would be so nervous Um, if I had to do a speech, um, different things like that. I would have it would upset my stomach like I would be so like it would bother me so much to where it will first start at start out as butterflies and mm-hmm. then it will full blown upset my stomach. And I would have to, and that, that lasted for a long time. That was as long as I can remember. Um, and I just remember every time we had a field trip before we went on any trip on the school bus, um, I had to, like I had to go to the bathroom. Um, and then I would also, I would notice in certain situations, I would always get like tingling in my fingers, like in my hands. Mm. So like right now I can feel tingling because I, I am a little anxious. Um, but um, it always started with a tingling in my hands. And so like I would just do different things with like my hands or try to do things to offset it. Right. Um, but I didn't realize what it was. I didn't know like there was a name for it because this was I'm going to say as early as I can remember was probably middle school. Mm. I, I know in high school it was very bad, but I didn't know that it was a thing. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was a thing. I knew something was going on because it was kind of like I had to, like I'm saying it now, but I had to listen to music. I was like, pump myself. Uh, mm. And I would like literally pump myself up, y'all, just to go through the school day. Crazy. Like, um, but I remember, um, like my household was not always. Uh, conducive to it wasn't always healthy I'll put it that way the the household wasn't always healthy um, yet my mom always tried to make it as healthy as she could so I recall like things would happen and then I would kind of seclude myself because I didn't know what to do with the energy and like it would kind of fester up and I would blow up like behind like my closed doors but i didn't know like it would be like literally like something welling up and not that somebody did something it was just the emotion just kind of welling up welling up welling up and then it would just have to release Mm. um and then i think fast forward to last last year or the last couple of years yeah um I knew something was wrong. So like, I've always known that there was something, some underlying something was going on with me, but I didn't know what. And because therapy and talking to people was kind of like, you don't do that type of stuff with our culture. Um, And then I didn't know that it was just so, you know, free to do it. But um, I realized that something was wrong. Like I would get frustrated and then I would get angry. Right. And then something would happen and it'll work me up and I would get angry and I would lash out. And but it would be 
after I had lashed out, and I think after you had tail cut me. That I First of all, it wasn't a tail cut. <laughs> it was. It was a tail cut. It wasn't a tail cut. It was more so like realize what you're doing. It was a tail cut, y'all. It was tail it's cut. it's. I think a lot of times we do stuff. But we don't see right. what we do or how we do it. So it's kind of like look at them. It's like looking back on a destruction that you just created. Right. And, and that's what it was. It wasn't really necessarily a and tail I got, cut. It yeah. was more so like. It was, it, was, it was a tail cut. It's like look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. And I mean, and, and it took a while for me to really start understanding what he was saying. And then I would do it and then I would get anxious because now I got to figure out how do I fix this? So then like that would cause more on top of more. And then I went into that like feeling bad and like I was <laughs> literally. But talk about. On a roller coaster. Talk about. Because I, I brought to your uh, attention into your uh, that maybe you should go seek professional help. Right. Ooh, and I was and mad, y'all. She, she, she thought I called her the worst name in the world. I did, but it was one of those things where things had gotten so crazy with her. For me, I'm a um, I'm uh, I'm the other side of the pillow. Cool, yes, calm, cool, and collective. And I believe we lose things when we lose ourselves. Mm-hmm. And when we lose ourself, it's like when you lose control of yourself, everything else is like domino effect. Like if for her, if she woke up and she stepped on a toy, it was it was it that would literally catapult throughout yeah. her whole day. I just had a horrible day today. And whole day be messed talk up. about how me telling you, OK, babe, you should probably just get some professional help. Um. And the crazy part is you weren't the first person to say that. Um, I would go through, like, we I had done therapy with our pastor. Um, yeah. So I had done spiritual counseling. I had done that part. Um, I had, and that was, it was, I think it was brought up then. But then um, when you said it, I took it way way left and she took um, it as you you took it as an attack i did i took it as more an attack. as a advice right i took it as an attack because um and it, this is some of those things where when things are said to you when you i'm gonna say well i was a little bit younger but when things are said to you and they kind of just stick with you um when he said it, it kind of rung like a this bell from the past. Like, um, an ex had told me that I was mentally unstable. So when um, he said go to see a therapist, that's the first thing that snapped in my mind. Oh, so I'm crazy for real then. I must have something going on with me. I ain't going to, who we think he, like, I was really, um, I was mad, y'all. I was so mad and so, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to start flipping tables like Jesus did. Uh, now, Jesus, that, that's not why Jesus flipped tables. That's not why he yeah, flipped tables. Why he, flipped tables. <laughs> he didn't flip tables. He had I said, no type of anxiety. He, he was fed up. <laughs> 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 and so, y'all, I think that last straw, I can't remember what happened. And I'll, I'll never forget. I walked. Was that the morning I walked down? I think that was that more than I walked. I don't know. But anyway, I had a few moments. But what was happening is my anxiety was triggering so much anger and so much frustration from literally the moment I woke up. If our youngest had a meltdown, that set my day off wrong. If a kid made me mad at school, I came home. My whole day was gone. It was mad. Yeah. It was just mad. Everything. Couldn't get nothing done. I was there. And so it yeah. took me a while. And he said, well, when you're ready... And when you're tired of being tired of being tired, then you're going to do it. Um, But I finally got tired (laughs) because I got tired of blowing up and being frustrated all day is exhausting. That took a lot of energy out of you. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot. It was bad. Um, But I think the main thing that made me go and seek is because you had started working. 
and I then had to get up early in the morning and travel um, about 15, 20 minutes to drop our youngest off at the daycare. Mm -hmm. And I realized that something was going on because um, in my traveling, driving past cars, 18 wheelers, driving past anything made me extremely nervous. Um, even me in the passenger seat would make me nervous if he was passing a car or if a car was like extremely nervous, like ready to like, (gasps) (gasps) like it was bad. It was y'all was bad. I can't even say it was horrible. And so I knew then that something was going on, but it was, um, we had an issue at, at, at school and we ended up having to go in lockdown. And when we went in lockdown, your girl just like I was ready to lose it. It was like an unplanned, and um, we have a, a good sense of discernment. And I'll never forget the sound of the principal's voice rung in my head, and I immediately got anxious. But I knew I had to hold it together because anxiety was something that I had talked about with a lot of my students in the classroom. So I knew they dealt with it. And some of them didn't talk about it, but I knew just kind of skimming through records that I had quite a few kids that had anxiety. So it was bad. Like I'm sitting up here and I'm anxious. The kids are anxious. I'm trying to hold it together. And I'm telling you, all if I'm not flinching, you don't flinch. But it was really bad. So after all of those little pieces of things, um, I thought it was good to finally go and see somebody. And so it was after my husband told me after a friend of ours that um, is a counselor (laughs) just finished told me after my counsel, my school counselor in my in my building, who's also a very close friend of mine shared her concern after some very close teacher friends shared like I had several close people in my circle that were like outside of work and you know in church related oh I'm sorry that is the same thing but the church our, my church close church family mm-hmm. was looking into it and seeing that I needed something more than what I said that they can give me at that time to help me to start sorting out things um, and then I had my people that are very I have just a handful of people that I'm very close to at work they were picking up on it and so um, I was losing I was even losing like I would come up like I don't know what's wrong with these kids these kids done lost it man I'm just done like burnout for a year and it was year three for me teaching burnout was real mm. Burnout was real. I was stressed out every single day I came home. I was not. And that was another thing too. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, I would get up in. The, I would get up in the middle of the night, and I was up like two to three, maybe two, three, four hours. And this should be mad. And then I'd be mad because I'm tired. I was sleeping. Because he was sleep. He would be sleep on me. I'd be up like two, max about two and a half hours, two to three hours. I would be up. And nothing that I did, I would. I read the Bible. <laughs> I, I was trying to do everything to go back to sleep. I would go to sleep, and I wake up. I'd be super tired, and I'm mad at him because he rested. And then I would have to take on Thursday, Friday. I would have to take our daughter 20 minutes away from home in the other direction, 20 minutes back, drop off the oldest, then go to work. So that's about an a hour drive, give or take. That was frustrating on top of having to pass these cars first thing in the morning that <laughs> that can't drive. So it was a lot of things that were just feeding my frustration. Um, and so I finally was like, you know what? Mm, I need some help and I need to go sit down and somebody sit down and talk with somebody. And I think on the other side of that, um, I can speak from <clears throat> I think it would I think it'd be called the caregiver mm-hmm. or something like that. But I think for me, outside looking at only thing I need to do, I think I would have a conversation with mom, I have a conversation with dad, and I would have a conversation with uh different people who would, you know, encourage me mm-hmm. because at that time you gotta understand, like I'm saved, but I ain't been saved over a decade yet. 
Right. I mean, I'm like, talking about truly saved. I'm, right. talking, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, you know, save and then. We're still like learning you know, in this. Well, I, we're still, I was still baby, baby Christian. Yeah, baby. Yeah. You know, so for me, and I believe a lot of times you never know, like, how good you are or your abilities until you're pushed, until right. you're like, till you think, man, I can't take this until, like, you look up, you took that plus more. Mm-hmm. And I think for me to shoulder the load, it was like, okay, you you head of the house. Mm-hmm. You man of the house, you husband. And it was like, don't react to how her actions are. Mm-hmm. It's like, because usually, back in the day, yeah, we'd have been bumping heads. But this at, at the stage I'm at now, I believe, like, I believe in that soft answer turns away wrath. Yeah. Like, I believe in, you know, just being patient, being understanding. Like, like it, my thing is, like, look at the bigger picture. Yeah. Like, I'm not a focus on so much of the problem mm-hmm. when there's tons of solution for all of that. It's like, if, if, if this didn't help, yeah. that didn't help, and right. that didn't help, well, let's try this. Yeah, and you did really well with um, simple things, like, you were um you took you handled the girls up until a certain point and then y'all when he told me that i had to like get up in the morning and handle them because the way it was running was he would get up before me get them ready so that they're pretty much like dressed out of I'll say out of the way so then I can go go behind and just do everything she I need to do. Kids. This was gone. Yeah. So it they were already ready. So all I had to do is drop off the oldest. That was it. Um but then it became a thing where I think I had gotten them dressed like once or twice and we saw that at first the little one she rebelled. So that made life for me mornings for me even the more frustrating. But then once it became a routine, you saw that they really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And so then that became one of my, that was another thing. So then I, now I got to wake up (laughs) early in the morning, earlier than what I was getting up. Cause I was doing seven. And then I said, well, at one point, one point I think I was trying to do five 30 or six, but I did six 30. It's just my, that's it right now. Um, but you you so because I was getting up early and I was having to do all these things, you did things such as clean. You uh, would experiment in the kitchen because you had just started being junior pit master at that time. Um, but uh, you about. you had around that time. Uh. Yeah. You you weren't in the you were experimenting. You you weren't like cooking cooking yet. It was cooking, but not, you know. Yeah, not you. Throwing down like I throw like, down. Yeah. But like you did things. One of my one of my love languages is I love like I love to come home. Everything's like laid out, everything's clean, everything's like it smell good. And he's a re- he's a great cleaner. Um and he would sit have the candle set. Like that would whoo, it would woo saw me. But then that little one, she would start up. And then that would flip that. And Pretty so hard. the little one is how she is. She is. She's y'all. She's just <laughs> like me. So <laughs> she would get started and me and her, we were like, mm. like he would say like me and him weren't bumping heads, but I was bumping heads with that little one. But that was when I was like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired. And I think he had said, uh, you know, I don't know what else to do. I'm walking on it shows in my own house and I'm walking. I don't know how you're going to come in the house and I don't know what, you know, you're going to do. And it was several times where he would take the girls out on a ride so I can kind of like woo and calm down. Um, sometimes it helped. Sometimes it didn't. Um, our little one, she is a mommy's girl. So I did not even know how to handle her wanting to be under me like that. And I know that sounds crazy, but in that moment, that was just how I felt. I would, I wanted everything to be able to disconnect um, because of my frustration and the fear of lashing out um, continually towards him and then towards our kids. So that was when on my own, um, I called and I made my first appointment. And <laughs> I think with the kids in the end, I found a way to 
number one, shield them mm-hmm. from not really seeing mommy like that. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times we get... One thing about me, I don't get caught up in myself. Right. I get caught up in, okay, what's best mm-hmm. for both sides? Right. And I would rather take them away, mm-hmm. let her rage out while they're not mm-hmm. here, and then we come back in and see something different because I believe, mm-hmm. like, it's just certain things I feel like kids should not see. You know, like, certain things are not for kids. And, and I believe that, that, in a sense, you have to protect them. And not only protect them, but it's also protecting her because after it's over, after it's said and done, it's like it makes the pain even more. Yeah. And, you know, in it was it, it was kind of protecting her and protecting them at the same time. And 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 as 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 head of the household, you have to do things like that. My actions and and, and, and what I did, I swear, it was Holy Ghost Spirit led. Because me, I'm like, I'm 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 my alpha. I'm a serious alpha. Like when it comes to this 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 my kingdom and 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 the orders and how things run. Yeah. I'm bold in it. I stand it. And, and when I say ask for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what it is. Yeah. There's no if, ands, or buts, or slacks it about yeah. it. And when I recognize things that are not not necessarily, I wouldn't say necessarily of God, but out of character. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't hesitate to call it out. Yeah. Like, I didn't hesitate to call out and do something. Yeah. He, he would um, hesitate and call it out. Um and that's when I started to recognize, like, the more, because there were times where y'all, I did not want to go to therapy. Therapy was the most draining thing. And that was like, she I that. would go, <laughs> I would go, I would come home, I would go to work, I would rush home because I was still, I think I was doing Thursdays, wasn't it? I think it was Thursdays. Yep. Yep. So I would have to leave work, go grab the little one. Bring her home, get them fed, wait on him to come in, zip, <laughs> zip right up the street, literally right up the street. Um, and it was so emotionally draining. Oh my gosh. Like that was the one thing that I did not like realize. And then, um, but it started to help me kind of put some pieces together. And so, like, when I got my diagnosis, it was like, oh, wow. Like, now it all makes sense. And it mm-hmm. was able to, I was able to, like, put a, uh, put a diagnosis title to, to yeah, put a title to what I had been dealing with for so long. Because, uh, and it was so funny because I didn't tell, like, nobody knew um, I was in therapy. Um, like, my immediate family I think my grandma knew, um, but that was it. Like, I didn't want to share it with uh, anybody else. And then not everybody, even in our immediate circle, knew that I was I was going to therapy. So I kind of kept it to those people that um, were encouraging me to go um, just until I could get through. Um, well, just so I can get through and start processing. Once I started processing, it was like a little bit easier um, to go through. But then I would still have triggers that would make me anxious. Mm-hmm. So driving still made me anxious. Being in the passenger seat still made me anxious. The kids moving around at school too much made me anxious. Our kids screaming, like all of these different, like I had so many different triggers. So it was very difficult for me to pinpoint which one it was. Which this. one was like the root. So um, I continued to go to therapy for a while um and then i had an issue it was when i think it was a sunday after it was a sunday after church um and it was right before right before covid hit i think i want to say right before covid hit uh or a little bit before covid hit um i had went what about three days 
I think I went like three days with severe chest pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had done everything. I had done apple cider vinegar. I had done um, mustard. I had done an acid. I had done everything you can think of. I did it. And I finally was like, so I'm not right. Yeah. And then you were, I think you were pushing me. You you would only you knew no one outside of like you knew, but then at work, um, some of my teacher friends who are also they're saying they were picking up on wait, so not right with your heel. Um or Mrs. Mo, sorry. Um, but <laughs> cut that out. Um, but something's not right. So what do you need or what do we need to do? And I was like, well, I've been kind of having chest pain. And they was like, you need to go, when you leave here, you need to go straight to Urgent Care. And I'm like, ah. So I did. I went like one day after work um, and they did the EKG. And then the lady at the Urgent Care, she said, everything looks fine. But if there's something going on, I can't do anymore. You need to go to the ER right now. Hmm. Literally, that was my face. <laughs> and so I called him and I'm like, hey, she's like, I got to go to the ER. Can I just wait because it's late? And he was like, nope, go now. So um, I went to the ER and y'all, that was the most scariest thing for me because I didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew that I was going to the urgent care, but him, one of my teacher friends, um, I think that's it. I think y'all were the only two. And so she was like, well, let me know what you, let me know what they say. And I was like, ah. So I text her and she said, uh, let, you know, she kept checking in on me. And so I get in the ER and I sign in. So I'm not, I hadn't even signed like all of the paperwork and authorized everything. And this guy was already there to whisk me to the back. I was like, whoa, the doc, like I had never seen an ER doctor in a room so quick. And that made me very fearful because I thought like, oh my God, am I having a heart attack? Mm. That was the first thing that I thought because I knew I was overweight. I hadn't been working out. I hadn't been eating right because this was before we started working out. This was when I knew I was at my heaviest. My blood pressure had been horrible like my blood pressure where i should have been on medicine um (laughs) is how high my blood pressure was and i had my watch and so my heart rate would be like in the 70s and 80s and that's the resting rate not healthy at all and um that was scary because nobody was there with me you weren't there you were home with the girls um nobody knew i was there oh grandma did i told grandma um, well, she gonna find out, and she was gonna. She wanted to come up, and I was like, "No, yeah. I'm good." But that in that moment, I needed to be in that room by myself. Um, Why though? Because that was the moment where the father actually spoke to me. To it was kind of I never had quiet time, y'all. Like I had to lay in that in that hotel in that hospital bed with my blanket. I had dozed off, and that was probably the most quiet time I had had in whew, I don't know how long. Like it was just straight quiet. Nobody was coming in the room. Like they had already taken my vitals, um, and they had done some of the preliminary tests. And um, I know the the nurse. He said. Are you on blood pressure medicine? I'm like, no. He said, if you were going to see your doctor right now, he's like, they will put you on blood pressure medicine because your, your blood pressure is through the roof. I'm like, really? And so, like, they monitored my blood pressure for, like, two hours. I think it was, like, two hours. And so, like, my phone was about to die. <laughs> but in that moment, it was like, Tiff, can I, sorry, Mrs. Mo, you got to pull it together. Um... You have to do better than what you're doing. You can't do it alone. And so I was still in therapy at that time that this incident happened. And actually, I hadn't seen, I think that I think I actually ended up having to miss a week. Because it was something, it was something that happened, and I think it was closed down or something big. Oh, I know what it was. I had open house. And I didn't go that Thursday. I didn't go that Thursday. And so that Friday I went. So it was like a whole week between when I had I saw her last. And so I'm laying in that bed and I'm just praying, well, Lord, 
don't let this be a heart attack because I got my husband, I got the girls, I got like all of this. Like, what do I need to do? Um, and it was kind of like a reflection of, I know I can't be going out like this because there's more for me to do. And so in that moment, it was just like, wow. So I lay there for, it was about two hours and they finally came back and they said, um, you know, you need to follow up with your regular doctor, which I didn't, um, I didn't do that at that time. I had to call and make an appointment, but they said, we don't see anything. Everything's clear. No blockage. No this. Like, I mean, I had every test you can think of and I'm sitting in the bed. Like my first initial thought was, oh my God, I'm going to have all these bills. I ain't got no money to be paying all these bills. Like that was the first thought. And then it went to bigger. And I would say that to him and he was like, babe, don't worry about that. You got to be healthy. And so that became my driving force is I have to be healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually for my family. And, um, once I did that, it was kind of like I was, I'm going to say a clean slate, but it was more so of, okay, I have to do more because therapy is not really help. I mean, well, I can say it's not helping. It's not really helping, but therapy was not calming down my anxiety enough for me to still be able to function mm -hmm. because I basically had a full blown anxiety attack and, and it felt like a heart attack. It was so, it was scary. I mean, literally chest pain, sitting up in the middle of the night. Um, I know, I think one night you was trying to make me get up and go. And I, I was like, I'm going to just wait till tomorrow. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. And I just, I literally pushed it off for three days. Um, She's always been a fighter. Yeah, I've always pushed through. I was going to work. Yeah, I was hurting at work. Um, but I've always just been um, a person to push through. Uh, if it was not like, painting me to where like I couldn't move then I was gonna I was gonna make it happen like in my mind I still gotta I still gotta be a wife I still got be a mama I still gotta teach these children like it was just so much I knew I needed to go through that process alone um and I I, I, th I think I think I thank you <laughs> I was mad at first because y'all I felt like I don't like hospitals <laughs> I don't like hospitals I don't like the way they feel and let alone to be in there by myself um and so I was kind of upset because he I was I think he, feelings wise I felt upset with him because I I felt as if Hey, somebody could watch your girls. You could have came with me. But then in hindsight, the more and more I thought about it, I wouldn't have processed it like that. I wouldn't have processed the I wouldn't process it the way I did. Um, and it would have just been a crutch. And I think for me, <clears throat> it was a another way of protecting. You know, like I know if See, my girls are very smart. They're they keen are. on when things change. They're keen on when something is off. Right. They're, they're good at they're good at noticing those type of things. So I figure out. I felt I felt like if we would have let them go to somebody else, they'd have picked up on something yeah, else. What's wrong? But if I'm in place, mm -hmm. it keeps them calm. Like even though they may say, you know, where's mommy? Where you know, mommy's you know taking care of this, this, this that, and you know. When they see me, it's calm. Mm -hmm. They're calm, so it that that was my thing to keep them calm. Yeah. And and for her to you know once she got finished is to come home for the most part. Yeah. And you know we don't have she won't, she won't have to go to this person, we'll go to that person, right. then drive home, do all that stuff. I calculate like that. Yeah. But for me, you know, it's I've always been at the point where number one, hear from the father to to see what is best. Sometimes she'd be like, what we got to do? I'd be like, hold up, I don't hear nothing. And, and if I don't hear nothing, I'm not going to say nothing. Mm -hmm. But the minute I hear, I will do and I will act on it. So that was the reason why I chose to keep the kids there. Yeah. You know, um, as some, like somebody has to be the person that, you know, um, that cares beyond what the situation is. Because mm -hmm. I could have easily looked at it 
as you know, oh, she just wilding out, you know, like cut I and I always say it's it, it's it's something, but. For me, and like I always tell my wife, I don't love you for you. I love you unto God. Mm-hmm. Now, regardless of the situation, I say, God, am I loving my wife right? right? Am I putting her before, like she, like, am I putting her in a position where she's supposed to be put? Like, mm-hmm. nothing comes before my wife except God. Mm-hmm. And that's how it should be. Right. For most men out here, if you're putting anything before your wife, you're doing yourself and your family a disservice. Yeah. Period. And I think the the main thing for him was making sure that I go <laughs> because I, I do push back because I, I don't like the doctor. I didn't like the idea of possible because I'm like, I didn't want to be uh, around other people. And I want to say that's like people had started getting sick, but like COVID wasn't like heavy. heavy. Like it wasn't, you know, to the point where everything was like it is now or close enough to it anyway. And I was just like, man, I really don't want to go sit in the ER. And I'm like, ooh, crazy people, you know, because you never know what you're going to get in the ER. And then luckily, um, we I didn't know that there was an ER on our side of town, which is not or at that time was not as busy because they were like newly open. Mm-hmm. So I was able to go there, get the treatment or, or get the help that I needed um and kind of go from there and then once i did the follow-up with um then it went to bad I, I need more i think i need more than just therapy so then um i met with my therapist i told her about you know the panic attack and you know we were trying to still forgot the trigger and i'm like all i did is when to eat so that's why i thought and i had I'll never forget. I had tomato bisque soup with a half of a sandwich. And I just thought I had heartburn from the tomato bisque soup. But something, something I was going through or dealing with internally triggered that panic attack. Yeah. Um, and so I still to this day cannot tell you what triggered it. Um, but I knew that I needed more and I did not want to have that feeling again because I would I was scared to sleep and I would I was crying. I think I then I cry. Probably cry. I'm pretty sure I cried. And I was like, I'm scared to go to sleep, babe. I'm, it hurts bad. I'm scared to go to sleep. And um, so I went ahead and when I went to my doctor, I told her what happened. You know, blood pressure was still up. And um, from there, we talked about medicating. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was after I had talked to some people um, that deal with anxiety that were on medication. Um, and so, and these are people that I trust, um, and that they were very open about how they deal with anxiety and what they do to cope. And so I got like medicines that would not be too harsh. Um, and then I started, once I started getting names of things, I started researching and then I, I presented it to you and I said, babe, I think I need you know, medication and you, you were for it because it was just whatever we needed to do to get help. me help me. and get me normal. Now the idea behind medicine, I was like, mm, I really don't want to be on it, but I knew I needed something because anxiety was affecting my everyday life from work to home, to driving, to going in the store. Um, it was affecting a lot. Yeah. Um. And so my day to day, almost basically, uh, crippling. Yeah, it was. I I didn't want to drive. I did not want to be in a car, having to get on the highway. Um, a car would pull out in front of us. I immediately would freeze up. I. It was just so much. The kids at school would like kind of rush me, and I would have to like hold my hands out like whoa wait y'all okay everybody stop i need everybody to sit down and i need one person at a time so like it was just a whole lot of things that i could not really deal with and handle and so let's let's talk about um we talked about how it affected you mm -hmm. the road to noticing that you need professional help now let's talk about how you're getting over it now 
Um, so I have been, I don't know how long I've been on medication. I've been out of therapy since July, June, July. One of those. My therapist basically told me I didn't need her anymore. <laughs> um, but once I started taking the medicine, I'll back up. Once I started taking the medication, um, it was making me sharper in the instance of before I would have like these racing thoughts. So I would have my whole to-do list up in my head and I would be up like, oh, I need to do this and this and this and this and this. I had all this stuff racing. Once I started on the medication, maybe like a, a week in um, after I got started, I can immediately f- start to see a difference. And so like it slowed my mind down to where I was able to jot down a to-do list and actually tackle my task. I was able to do things in such a precise way to it just made things run so smoothly. And mind you, this was COVID was COVID had hit by this time. Yeah. So COVID was now full fledged. We had already got in. Um, we were not, we had gotten word that we were about to go full online. So this was like April ish. March, March is, this is the first time that I think things started to shut down. So once that happened and I was on the medicine, I was able to kind of whip through. So when I heard about COVID and the idea of having to get all these lessons together, at first I was freaked out. But then um, I was like, oh my God, babe, I got to go online and how I'm going to do that because I got a girls and I got to do it. So like, but then I was able, the more that it got in my system, I was able to still process. So once we went completely out with COVID, I was running things. I was teaching my students. I was teaching our child and I had the one, we pulled her out of daycare. Um, and so I was home full time. Yeah. And I was able to juggle all of those things and not be overwhelmed. That's when I knew that the meds were actually helping me. Um, And then, like I said, fast forward, I was doing very well. I was strategically like my my blow ups and frustration level had dropped. Now, I was still tired, still a little normal cranky, but it was nothing like it was prior to. Um. And then we went to, I got to a point where something was triggering me. I want to say it was driving again. It was something that had started triggering me. And I I looked at him and I said, babe, I said, I think I need to up my meds another dose. Because I was seeing the doctor every two weeks just to kind of see where I was. And so then um, the last time I saw her, I, I had told him, I said, I think I need to go up. And so I went up. And now I have been good. I'm like I said, I'm anxious now, but I took that early this morning. So I I take my medicine in the morning and it will last me usually throughout the day. And it starts working within the 30 minutes to an hour. Um, I can say that it helps because I had one instance where I did. I forgot to take it um, and I immediately went into um, panic attack <laughs> mm-hmm. at work. <clears throat> Um, and so that let me know that it is working because once I got into my system within the 30 minutes to an hour, I was good. But, um, so that has been the only panic attack that I have had since, um, that very first one. And it was the same. It was the tightening of a chest. It was the tingling. And I have it, like I said, I have it now because, you know, it's just anxious talking about it. Um, but it's like tingling in my arms and my fingers, um, and I and I called the first person I called. I didn't bother you, but I text my, our school counselor. And I was like, "Look, I forgot to take my medicine. Um, what you got?" <laughs> and she immediately came down to the room with some fidgets and things to kind of help me. And they were helping, but it was uh, my group of kids. They're so rambunctious um, in a good way, and. I knew I wouldn't be able to like make it all the way through the day without it. And so um, luckily the principal that I worked for was gracious enough to be like, yes, go, go. So I came home, I took it. And then you automatically knew right away that I was off. Um, Cause you basically sensed you he was laying in the bed y'all as i called him babe i'm having panic attack having medicine by the door thank you and i got here he laying up in the bed he's like i was like you good he's like i'm good what about you 
I'm sorry, I'm about to be good. I got to take this medicine. But he just picks up on a lot of those things. And then when I do feel um, anxious or over, more so now it's just kind of like an overwhelming um, because of how things are going with school, just trying to get everything organized. New stuff. Um, it's new. So he can't actually, he will text me and ask me if I'm okay. Um, but with the help of my medicine, I'm, I'm holding it together. <laughs> um, but prayer, um, I read several devotionals throughout this course, um, of dealing with anxiety. The first thing that I did once I found out that, um, I, I was diagnosed with anxiety and persistent depression disorder, meaning that, um, I am not in a deep depression, but I am in a consistent depression. Um, and it does not take much for me to get there. So I have had to, and, and that's something I've been dealing with all my life. So it was like those two things coupled together. Um, I really have to be mindful of, where I am, what's going on, and kind of talk things out. So that opened up the door so we can talk more. I prayed more. I read um, a lot of devotionals on my Bible app in reference to anxiety and prayer and, you know, those things like that. So that kind of opened the door for me, coupled with therapy, the medication, like I can say that, this whole COVID thing where it has made some people anxious. Um, I have been able to thrive because of my regimen that I do, which is the medication first thing in the morning. And then I read my, um, I read my meditation or my Bible scriptures. Um, and then self care has also been, the big thing yeah. that I have done because my counselor friend, she pushed that y'all when she found out, um, even before she found out, she was just pushing so much like self care, so many different things. So she has been very pivotal, um, in helping me, uh, through this process of understanding what self care was and how it can look for me. Um, and then I had some other people, like I said, I know a lot of people that deal with anxiety and it is crippling or debilitating to, to several, but I refuse to allow it to get me down. So whereas working out would make me afraid, um, <coughs> from injury and different things like that, um, I began to, you introduced me to the jump rope and, um, I fought you on it at first, but then working out has now become one of my coping mechanisms. And I can actually, uh, it's self care and it's a coping strategy for me. And I can tell when I go too long without working out because then I have a lot of pent up. So like yesterday, he didn't work out. He was asleep, but I pushed myself to go ahead and work out so I can get in. Yeah, you listen. I don't want y'all to think I'm lazy. He's not lazy. He had to work yesterday. I and normally we work out. 3 a.m. He was yesterday. up at 3. Yeah. And but I was still, flipping but he was, ribs. He, he was slapped. <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> so those are just some things that I do. Um, I have fidgets. Um, which I just use like I don't have one. I wish I had one. I have a stretchy keychain, the old school stretchy keychains, it's color, and then I put like the beads that you put on little girls' hair. I put those on there and so I can just kind of move them and they just simple, nobody can see them. Um, but those are just some of the things that I do on a consistent basis. Worship, worship has helped me through COVID. <laughs> um, I listen to my worship music and then we talk a lot. A lot. I mean, I think more. First of all, I think um, talking helps you unload. Yeah. And if you're not unloading something, which means you're taking on more mm -hmm. and more each day, like at some point throughout the day, you have to unload. Yeah. If you go throughout the whole day and you haven't unloaded, you're doing nothing but receiving and receiving and receiving mm -hmm. and receiving. And that's why it becomes so heavy. And that's what builds up that anxiety that you know that stress that depression that other things like mm -hmm. that you need somebody who you can hang on to right lean on to um call text video yeah. zoom something. meet something this walk 
it's not meant for us to do it by ourselves. Right. A lot of times we do it by ourselves and then wonder why we crazy. Yeah. And that was the thing too. That was my biggest thing is a lot of times um, when I, when I thought about what I was going through, I never wanted to say we're going through this or this is this, but you, you reminded me, no, this is not your diagnosis. This is our diagnosis because it, is not only affecting you, it is affecting our family. And so you made it um, at a part of who we are. Um, literally, I mean, it's, it's just the vows that you sung. Um, but you took, you took, or you always take on what I'm dealing with and you say, no, this is how we are going to deal with it. No, you're not the only one on this. This is what we are doing. And um, that, that's what it is, honestly. Yeah. And that support, that support and that push um, is what made me see. Because, y'all, I, I mean, the the things that I was dealing with and then the things that were coming up out of me that were not, I'm not, I wasn't, always, I wasn't ugly to like cursing him out like that kind of, my ugliness was other ways. And, um, the the things that I put out that he took, like for me, that was like on hindsight. No, you can't change the past. You can only kind of move forward. And so that was the thing. I did not want to be the person causing that hurt or that harm um, or throwing the negative energy at the person that is here helping me at the person that is here as the head of the family that is actually trying to make sure that I'm good. Um, and I had to realize that because it's so easy for people to become verbally abusive. And I was to that point. Um, and I think for me, um, being the person that, you know, the, Speaking from the caregiving mm-hmm. side, um, you got to be, see beyond the action. And I think for me, that's what it was. Like, even though I felt so much hurt, like I felt like, okay, am I failing as a husband? Like, like, because I always feel like if I'm not making a person happy, then what, like, like, what am I doing? But then the Holy Ghost had to quicken in me, like, listen. You do what I tell you to do. You be patient. Regardless of what it looked like, I want you to see down the road of the picture where I showed y'all. Y'all living a wealthy life. You guys are 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 happy and 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 living life to the fullest. And I always kept that picture in my mind because it's it's I always tell people if you can see it, it's something I wouldn't worry about. It's the unseen yeah. that is critical. It's what you don't see. It's your future. Like, I could have easily just threw in the towel and said, you know something, I, I can't take this. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, it, 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 it's for better or for worse. Yeah. And I think that was uh, a lot of frustration for me, too, because I did not know how to say, like, this is what I'm going through and this is what I'm dealing with. So I was looking for him to just up and throw in the towel. Um, I think that's because what she was used to. Yeah, it was just that habit of 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 past things, and, and I was looking for him to say ugly things back to me. Um, but he never once did. All he did was. Oh, continue. Th- thank God for change, though. First <laughs> off, like let's, let's get that straight. That you know, I'm not gonna say I, I just sit there and, and took no, it, he did not. Know, but but it was loving. Day, it was loving. It was kind kindness. It was wisdom. But he he definitely, I would never go too far. Because he would, he would, he would, he would, one, he would tell on me, <laughs> but two, a lot of times he did not, he didn't tell, he handled it himself. And in, in the handling, it was still with such conviction. So it made me like, you know, how, you know, I'm unapolog- unapologetically me. No. I was like so apologetic when he broke it down. Like, I think I, I had several times where I just broke down, like after him speaking and then like it penetrating all of the other stuff and getting to my heart. 
because in that moment, that's what I needed. Because again, like I said, I went, I was going through therapy, meds, all of this. Nobody, nobody knew. Uh, my mom found out after the fact that I had been on, you know, going to a therapist and going because that was starting to also um, our relationship. I was having to tailor some of those things as well. Um, but in in all reality, what this process has taught me is one, it is OK to stand up to things to keep you from having different triggers yeah um i was not always a very vocal person i'm an only child and i take um you know honoring my mom and my father and not being disrespectful to them i take that seriously and so i did not want to be nasty to my parents um and so i just I just firmly said, (laughs) said how things were and how things were going to be. And I I wasn't going to bump heads. It was kind of like, this is what I'm going through. And if you don't understand it, then I'm sorry. Um, And, you know, my mom, you know, only thing she wanted to know earlier or wish she would have known earlier, um, but was okay. My dad, you know, attribute a lot of it to you know him being absent and wanted to know how he could help so like i really had once they found out it became a supportive thing um it's not something that we you know i talked to my dad and my grandma about it but it's not something that my mom and i talk a lot about um and she just kind of respects what i did and i just kind of respect that fact so um everybody is not going to be okay with you seeking therapists or uh, seeking therapy because they don't understand um, a lot of people fight what they do not right. understand and for me um professional help is better than no help yeah what's the worst that can happen that what what, what they tell you what's really wrong with you right and, and i think we're we're afraid to face mm-hmm. that true thing yeah. of whoa it, it, so i'm not perfect yeah and I think that's oh, yeah. so I'm human. That's and that and was me. Listen, because I get it. Like everybody want to be perfect. Everybody want to be superhero. But at the end can. of the day, listen, everybody's not. We're not. We're not. We're far from it. That's the crazy part. We're always gonna be walking with some type of thorn in our side, right? But. Don't let that thorn define you, because she could have easily just said, you know, since you ain't going in the relationship, I'm going to end it, right. and that's just going to be that. Right. And then that's another broken family yeah, that and refused I, to, to, to get things together. To get I mean, that, yeah. like, we talked about, like, if I, if I internalized everything, as most men do, we internalize everything, and, and, and we don't sit down and talk to the person who we mm-hmm. in the ring with, like. Yeah. Like there should be no fight here. Right. Regardless of the situation, there should be nothing but help. Yeah. It and it was be. crazy too cuz therapy brought up like I had to face old things from the past. So therapy brought up things and he had no idea of what I was tackling in therapy, what was being said in therapy. He didn't know how to help and I'm like, I can't even tell you how to help me cuz I'm still trying to help me. And so that was frustrating once, a and bit. that was that was like frustrating um right for him. Was a lot and, frustrating. And it was a lot of because what I learned for me because I have had so much past trauma is that I literally had to process so much so all i could tell him is babe keep doing what you're doing like that was literally all i can i can say and um he made me talk things out um and made sure i talk things out like when i say made not in like you gonna talk to me no it was more so okay let's let's discuss it um and then I had little hurdles like, OK, babe, if you see me doing this, can you remind me of this? So it became more of instead of us trying to work against each other, then it, it was like, I got to lean on you and I need you in this moment. So can you help me be accountable? So we became more accountable or I became more accountable to him and we 
were able to overcome a lot. And then like our relationship from there started to, to bloom. Um, I will say this, if I had not sought therapy and if I had not got on medication, I think these seven months we have spent quarantine together could have broken broken us and not saying to the point to where I said could have I said would have I said could have um he would just cut my tail all the time but I said that because of the level of frustration that I was dealing with um now I knew I, w- I wouldn't have gone any longer without it but we would have probably ended up I'll say we would have had to seek couples counseling we would have had to do something along those lines um but for the most part that's just my opinion he said no but i'm just saying no what huh were you shaking your head no no nah, i mean couple kind of, i mean i would have did whatever in, what was yeah. necessary to help regardless yeah. of the situation but that's like that's the thing i i definitely want to put out there is you know prayer like we have not had a bad moment during covid we have laughed we have cut up we've had like it has been great for us and i do attribute it to you know listening to your wisdom and your guidance and listening to the wisdom of others um who are familiar with uh anxiety and depression um and praying like i wouldn't be able to kind of sit here and i didn't talk about it um, still don't talk about it. a lot of people don't know. Um, I dealt with it, but well, they know now. They, y'all know now. Uh, all up in my. <laughs> mm. But for this podcast, um, <laughs> when I first thought about it, and you know, I fought it honestly because I think like, we both have been fighting it. Because for me, I don't, I don't deal with anxiety. Like I'm just a person that. I was snatched from everything I knew about, everything mm-hmm. that, I, that I, like, I was snatched from a whole world into a different world, became God saved, and all I lean on is God mm-hmm. now. That's all I know. So when problems, you know, when problems begin to come my way, like, I literally, all I do is pray. Like, yeah. that, that's my, that's my go-to. I'm, 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 I'm always studying. I'm always in worship. So for me, I take the essence of what it takes to be saving and, and use them and apply them. Yeah. And I think for me, like, no storm is too big because I serve a big guy, regardless of the situation. Like, I don't sit here and complain. Yeah. When and never once a, had, when, yeah, yeah. When, I mean, because it's, it's, yeah. and it's you always never a did. solution. You never. Always a solution. You, I mean, you, through this time, and it's been... A little, I'm not even a full year yet, but through this time, like you have been um, very supportive, um, and you you never question, um, you know, even through the moments of times you might have had frustration, like you never flinch. It was always, "What do you need, wife? What do the girls need? What do the boys need?" And then self last so it was you have done it in an effortless way and it's so crazy because people didn't know in that moment we were going through like we were it was it was it was tough i will say that it was tough um but people did not know that we were going through but we wrote it out together and i think um and we talked about better together um a few episodes back or a few shows back. Um, And that literally describes us because we became better in this particular season that we were in um, and still in, we wrote this thing out together and without, um, and I mean, we didn't even have like mom and dad in it all the way. Um, we haven't needed their help. We haven't, life. yeah. Like we haven't had to seek pastoral care, or any of that. Um, we've just been, you know, either conviction is coming through, you know, some song or some scripture or some devotional, or you know. I think yeah, that goes. Yeah, I think it goes back, which is God being the center of our of, yeah. of our marriage. 
And we just we just knew or we know that we have not really had um, any like really great role models when it came to marriage outside of like our church family. Right. So like within our family, we immediate family, we have not had to we have not had the ability to witness that. Yeah. So we want our kids to know that working together and and fighting through it literally we have had to fight this thing like we have this has not been the only thing we have fought but this is one of the major ones because um it was affecting me just as much as it was affecting um affecting them so um you close us out yeah <laughs> So in conclusion with um, this, just if you are finding that finding that you are overly anxious and it is starting to become debil uh, debilitating, um, it is starting to um, interfere with your everyday life, um, please seek some type of therapy to see if you can find um, find out what your triggers are, find out what your root causes are. Um, no one is too young or no one is too old to deal with anxiety. Um, please make sure that you take care of yourselves, talk it out, ask for help and don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, take those quiet moments uh, for self-care and that can look different for everybody um adults don't be afraid to have fidgets um yeah. because nowadays our kids are dealing with anxiety and they need to know that we too um deal with that my students are very aware uh <laughs> i gotta say this real quick so that one time y'all i i left when i had to come and get my medicine so that same class came in this week or last week, and they the first thing they said, Miss Hill, you took your you took your medicine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so that class though became so um they're so like involved and engaged. So they were concerned. They saw, you know, my fidgets and they were like, Yeah, we was trying to figure out and I kinda figured that you was just anxious, Miss Hill. But like they just kinda put two and two together. So don't be afraid to show your children or your students. Talk about this with them because a lot of times they think that they're in it alone. Um, and so it is important for all of us that deal with anxiety to know that we are not alone. Um, prayer works. There are many scriptures. There are books out there um, that are, I call them the self-help books um, that relate to anxiety that have scriptural scriptures in there and also testimonials. Um, but find that happy medium for you. Um, and if you're definitely finding out that, I mean, if you're lashing out at your significant other, at your children because you're anxious um, and you're overly frustrated, please, please, please seek the help. Um, don't let it get out of control. Mm -hmm. That is something that I did. Um, and um, I'm glad that I finally got the help that I needed. Um, and I'll definitely say it was at the right time. Yeah. And for those who are on the caring side, um, it's light at the, end of the, at the end of the tunnel. And no matter what it looks like, if you care about that person, you love that person, see beyond the actions and love them for who they are. And this concludes this podcast. And as y'all see this little, this, this, this little thing right here. These are uh, so uh, our, our podcasts that we are actually streaming from. Uh, take your time to check those out, um, mm -hmm. and if you're on Facebook, um, Instagram, Instagram, yeah. um, our YouTube followers. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the support that you give us. Um, continue to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So you know when we upload. And mm -hmm. we're thinking about uploading every, every day. day. I don't know yet. 
But you know, we shall see. But definitely thinking about it. Um, I feel the pull and the weight of the world needing some great content, and people say that you know we do such a good job. <laughs> um, so Ooh. probably look for more videos to come down the pipeline. Um, like I said, for those who are anxious, I, I feel it in the air, and my prayer is definitely goes out to y'all. Mm. And and man, I feel it heavy. Yeah. And if you all want to um, chit chat, chit chat, you know, hit us up, DM us, um, we will respond. Yeah, uh, one of us anyway. Probably yeah. nine out of ten. If it's anxiety related, I'll be responding. Um, if it's caregiver caregiver related or the you. person that is there, of course, he has you. Um, but again, disclaimer: we are not therapists. We are nah. not counselors. <laughs> certified counselors. Um, and what may work for me, it may not work for you. Um, but please seek the help that you need, uh, when dealing with your anxiety during these trying times. And like we always say, keep God first. And the rest will be added. Thank you. <laughs>